Hey, my name's Ed, welcome to my channel. I make, modify and mend things. And in this video, I'm gonna be continuing to build the kitchen in my 43 foot narrowboat, Joshua. Let's go. In the last episode, I had just fixed this narrow countertop down and I was waiting for my hob um, so that I could draw the outline of the aperture and get that machined in uh, before joining these two pieces together. As you can see, that's now happened and I've cut the aperture for the hob. Um, so now it's time to join this mitre. So I had some comments on the previous episode saying that this mitre is gonna come apart with, um, with the temperature when it gets hot and cold and the seasons and the wood moves around because it's a natural material, um, which I didn't realize was gonna happen. Um, and apparently the correct way to join countertops is to do a straight join, which I don't really want to do because I think it looks so horrible um, on a large piece like this. Uh, regardless if, it, if it's the correct way, I just don't like it. Um, which is the reason I chose to go with a mitre join like this. Um, however, I'm obviously going to have this problem of it opening up. So, in the last episode I probably showed you that I've machined um, some clamps into the bottom. So these slots here um, fit clamps underneath so they're going to pull it together um, I'm also going to be gluing this obviously um, but the glue probably won't hold it uh, by itself I am going to use biscuits as well um, because this piece is actually ever so slightly bowed it's convex so um, the biscuits will help locate it as well so I'm hoping that the combination of those two measures is going to help um, one of the other comments I got was that these two 30 volt sockets are too close to the countertop um, to be able to plug anything in, which is absolutely correct. Um, and that's a mistake on my calculations. Oh, or maybe I overlooked it, I can't remember. But what I can do is I can rotate these by 90 degrees. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take these sockets apart and just rotate these and put them back together again. So that means I'll just plug stuff in sideways. So that's not a problem at all, really. So I've cut the slots um, and now I'm going to start the glue up um, so you can see that the biscuits fit in those um, and they will help keep the two halves straight um, as well as providing an additional gluing surface. Um, I'm actually going to put the glue on these last just before I put it together um, because I want these to be able to float until I've got the two joins um, accurately together. So I'm going to glue up this surface first and then I'm going to put a little bit of glue on these before I put them in. Moment of truth. So what I'm going to do now is clamp the two halves together using these clamps. So that goes in the slot there. And then I just do up these nuts and it'll pull the two halves together. So that's glued up and as you can see I've clamped uh, a bar across it which I know is straight um, to try and bring it together as much as possible um, height wise. Uh, there is a little bit of a gap at this end which is really annoying because it wasn't doing that when I mocked it up without the biscuits and without the uh, glue. So I don't know what happened there. Um, I don't know if it's, when I sand it, it might fill, get filled with the sawdust. I'm hoping that will happen and the finish. Um, but I mean, we'll see. For now, it's just gluing. And this is gonna get in my right way for the rest of the day, but oh well. Um, yeah, on to the next thing. So I'm back at the workshop and I have started this the way I start most of the jobs on this project. Uh, and that's with a cup of tea. Um, then I went about gluing up this slab um, using the 95mm width of ash that I've got and I ripped them down to um, the, the lengths that I need and I'm actually going to make two, I've got my dimensions here, I'm going to make two shelves out of this. Um, so all I've done is I've doubled the uh, width um, and I'm just going to rip this in half and then cut two shelves. Um, 
But yeah, as you can see, it's slightly bowed. Um, I don't know whether that was because I clamped it using too much pressure and it's pushed up the boards or whether it's just the damp in this workshop. It's been here a couple of weeks now um, since I glued it, so I don't know. I don't think it's going to matter too much because I'm going to make some shelf supports and it's going to be screwed down. So I think that will pull it flat. Um, but yeah, now I'm just going to rip it down and cut it to shape and um, do some sanding. So the glue on the worktop is now dry and I've taken a clamp off as you can see. Um, it's pretty good other than there is a gap at this corner which is really annoying. I wanted to get this sanded and finished today but obviously that's not going to happen. The way I'm going to attempt to fix this is I'm going to try and run some glue into the gap and then I'm going to clamp it together. Clearly I can't clamp across these two faces because they're at 45 degrees to each other. So how I'm going to get around that is I've made these two blocks with 45 degree cuts in them and I'm going to glue them on here and here and then I have two parallel faces here and here that I can put a clamp across and close up the gap while it glues. Obviously those blocks need to be attached somehow because otherwise when you clamp them they're just going to work their way up here and they're not going to they're not going to give any clamping force. So I'm going to have to glue these blocks to the edges, which is fine on this back edge because it goes against this wall and you're never going to see it. On this edge, there's going to be some, maybe some damage when I remove it. However, I did see on YouTube someone have this very situation happen to them before. Um, and if you put a piece of paper between the object you're gluing to and your block, it's easier to remove without causing loads of damage. And then I can just sand off any glue residue uh, or paper that's left on here. Now, what, the other thing is I don't actually have any paper here, uh, so I've just got this old receipt. So, <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna use this and hope for the best.
Right, so I've done that. Uh, not gonna lie, gluing blocks of wood with receipts glued to them to my really nice worktop felt so dumb. But here we are. Oh well. I figured if this goes totally wrong, I can just route them off um, and I'll barely lose anything on this edge. So I don't think I'm actually going to destroy this unless I whack these off and it pulls a whole chunk of this. I think that's about the worst thing that could happen. So anyway, I'm going to stop talking about things that could go wrong and I'm just going to let this glue dry. So while that glue dries up, uh, I'm going to just sand and finish this surface over here. Um, I've already sanded around the edge where I did the round over, so I just need to do this top surface um, and then I can put a coat of Danish oil on it. I'm using clear Danish oil for this. I really don't want it to be that dark. I hate dark wood, as I've mentioned many times on this project. Um, so I want to put the lightest finish I can on this. And this is coming out darker than it will be when it's dry, uh, because obviously it's wet at the moment. And uh, that always makes things look a bit darker. Um, but yeah. Hopefully when this is dry, it will it will be a, a shade lighter than this because even this is a bit dark for me. I really like the raw um, colour of the wood that I've used on this boat. Um, but unfortunately, obviously you can't leave it unfinished. So you've got to put something on it. And I really like the shade of Osmo oil that I used on the floor and on the, um, the basin plinth and on the toilet. But that it's quite glossy and for surfaces like this where you're putting things and you don't want them to slide around it's not that good obviously so this danish oil soaks into the wood so if you only sand it to 120 then it's going to have a 120 feel to the surface even once you've got the danish oil on it i really like applying danish oil with a cloth um, you can get a much thinner coat um, and it it makes the shade a lot lighter than if you applied it with a brush. A lot of the instructions on Danish oil says to apply with a brush and then wipe off the residue with a, a cloth. But I like to just go straight to the cloth because it gives you much finer control over how much goes on. I'm talking like I'm an expert, but I've done this a few times now on little projects, practice projects for this. So now I just wait for this to dry. Um, it does look a bit pink on camera, but it's more sort of beach colour. Um, yeah, I'm going to give this about two or three more coats. I'll see how it goes. Now I just need to let that dry. So it's been a few days and the glue is now dry on these blocks. So now I'm going to try and clamp this gap together. What I think might happen is that the glue on the biscuits that I put in is probably holding this open. So I need to be able to put enough force on these blocks to overcome the strength of that glue, which I doubt is going to happen. I'm pretty sure one or both of these blocks is going to break off before it closes this gap, but I'll give it a go and uh, we'll see. So here goes nothing. I'm just gonna slowly wind this up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt to clamp this and then if it does squeeze up, I'll unclamp it, put some glue in and then clamp it back up. And I hope that it's got enough strength to do that. Um, is that close? It's closing at the end, but it's not closing up there. That's really annoying. And I was tempted to... I didn't do it much more than that because I think the blocks are going to break off. Oh, it is clamping up, but not all the way. I can hear creaking now. Um, so now 
I was tempted to put filler in this. I've used wood filler before and it is not pretty. Even when you stain it, it stands out a mile. So I didn't want to use it, but I'm tempted to. So what I've decided to do is dribble some glue down the gap and then I'm going to try and work it in with uh, this gap is so thin. I'm going to attempt to work it in with a, a knife because that's the only thing that will almost go down there. And then I'm going to clamp it up and I don't think it's going to close the entire gap. Um, but then I'm just going to live with whatever's left. I don't want to use filler because it always looks rubbish. And I would rather have a gap than have it looking shit. This does not look pretty. Uh, I've got a little bit of work to do. Right, that's squeezing the glue out, so it's definitely clamping. I don't want to break the, the blocks off, but I do want to close that gap as much as possible. That's as much as I dare do. So now I'm just going to wipe off this excess. So it looked rubbish, it doesn't look as bad now. Okay. Now, I just let that cure. I'm going to put something under here because Sod's Law says when, as soon as I leave, one of these is going to pop off and this is going to damage my floor. While the glue dries on the worktop, I'm going to fit these shelves. Um, I can't fit all three of them. I've actually made three of these since I last was at the workshop. Um, and yeah, I can't fit the bottom one because I'm still making the trim piece for the bottom, um, but I can fit the supports, uh, which hold the top two. Um, I didn't really want to use anything that used to already be on the boat, any of the old stuff. However, I had these pieces of um, sort of trim strip that used to hold up the, um, the walls to the old rooms, the toilet and the shower room. And it seemed like a shame to chop it up and burn it because there's nothing wrong with it but it was horrible and orange had orange varnish on it so I sanded it off put Danish oil on it it's gone hor horrible and yellow again but I guess it's just softwood um, so I am going to reuse them because it'd be nice to have something off of the old boat um, back in and you're not going to see these so I'm just going to put these under here as supports for the shelves and then um, screw the shelves to these. This isn't finished yet, but it gives you the general idea. Um, so there is a, there's a kickboard that's going to go under here, which is obviously a funny triangle shape. Um, that's at the workshop gluing up at the moment and I need to paint it. But other than that, these are pretty much done. Um, so these shelves just float in the corner. Um, and I'm going to use them to put plates, bowls and large saucepans on that don't fit in the cupboards that easily. Um, and I might end up needing to put a little fence around each of these because um, these are finished to a fairly smooth finish. They're not actually screwed on yet, but they are they are finished to a fairly smooth finish. So stuff might slide around on these. Uh, so I'll either use that little grippy mat stuff or I'll put a fence around them. I'll probably need to put a fence around them anyway, just because it's a boat. Um, and yeah, the, I put four coats of Danish oil on this worktop now. So I think that's probably okay to fix down. Um, I just need to switch that plug round and then I can fix this down permanently. So I've left this for as long as I can now. I've done everything else that I need to do here. Um, but now I have to actually do something about this. 
I glued this up last night at about 7 p.m. and now it's half past 10 in the morning. The glue says it takes 24 hours to cure, um, but obviously it will, it will go off a lot quicker than that. Um, you can usually take whatever you're gluing out of the clamps after a couple of hours with wood glue. Well, that's what I've learned through all the stuff I've done anyway. Um, I'm hoping when I take this clamp off, it doesn't spring apart. There's a lot of force there, obviously, but it's time to do it. I have decided that if this springs apart, then I'm just gonna sand it and finish it anyway. Um, but I really hope it doesn't. Come on. So far, so good. Now I've just got to remove these, these blocks. There's one, that was easy. And that was two. The, the paper thing actually works. Amazing. And that's gonna be easy to sand off. And there's no damage on there at all. Amazing, I'm really happy with that. Really, really happy with that. There we go. So after a bit of sanding, you would never know that that block was glued onto the side. I'm really chuffed with that. That could have gone so much worse. And the gap is definitely still there, but it's way smaller. It's about half the size. I can live with that. I can live with that. Um, so now I've just got to sand the whole top. I do actually have to level this. There's a tiny step here and I'm gonna sand this with some 80 grit to get that level along the join. Um, and then I'm just gonna sand the whole top. That's gonna be really boring, so I'll bring you back once I've done that and it's time to put the round over on. So apparently my inverter doesn't like the router and the camera being plugged in at the same time. So uh, there's no footage of me <laughs> routing the edge. I've routed the edge and I've sanded the worktop that was a really boring bit. Didn't actually take that long though. This beach is quite a lot softer than the ash that I've been using to make everything else with. Um, so yeah, uh, that wasn't too bad, but it was boring. It's done now and now it's time to stain the top. I say stain, uh, just put the finish on. So now I'm just gonna Danish oil the whole thing. So that's the first coat. Um, I've also done inside this cavity for the, uh, the sink, just in case water gets under the sink and gets around there. I wanna give it a little bit of protection. So now I just need to let that dry and then give it a few more coats. I've put four coats on this side and I think that's gonna be enough. Um, so just three more to go on this one and then I can start putting it all together. So I am learning so much with this project. It's good and bad. In, it's good in a way because I'm gaining really valuable knowledge, uh, but it's not great for my bank balance. Um, so I bought these draw slides um, to make, so I'm gonna make drawers under the kickboards, um, under my cupboards, um, because obviously all this space is wasted uh, in a normal kitchen. Um, so I'm going to turn these into storage space by having drawers that come out. So the kickboards, they're actually like false fronts. Um, this is where the fridge is going to be, but this is underneath 
one of my kitchen cupboards. Um, so yeah, the way I've designed these is I can slide out the bottom, um, the bottom of the cupboard because I wanted to be able to access this. Um, so yeah, I bought these drawer slides so that they can go either side. I mean, they're going to be like there. Um, now I thought you just had to buy ones that would fit in the space you have. I didn't realise that um, you should buy the maximum size that you can fit in the depth um, because the drawer will only be able to open as, as far as this is long. Um, so I could, this is a 350 mil slide. I could probably fit a 400 mil one in here, which means I'm losing 50 mil of drawer opening. And given the fact that there's already an overhang because these are kickboards, that 50 mil extra is really valuable because it will mean I'll have more access to more of the drawer when it's open. Um, these 350 mil slides are going to be okay for this cupboard um, because of that batten along the back. I actually don't have any more depth, um, so it's going to be okay for there. So I can actually, I can actually use these. See, I've, I've got about two and a half centimetres left. So I can use these, and I'll just mount these as far as I can forward. Um, but certainly for this cupboard under, this uh, drawer under here, I could fit almost another 100 mil there. So I could probably have a 450 mil drawer slide on this one. Um, and that's the same for, I am actually gonna split this into two because the span is so long that this droops in the middle. So I'm gonna put some support under here and split this into two drawers uh, and the one under the cooker as well. Uh, I've got much more depth there. Uh, so the, the slides I've bought are too short. But they're not too short, they will work, but it just means I'll have better access to the drawers when they're open with a longer slide. That's an expensive mistake to make, especially with fancy slides like these. These are push to open and soft close. So, they're about 10 quid each, which isn't the end of the world. It's not the most expensive thing, but it is quite a big expense when only these ones I've bought are suitable. The other ones I bought are 50 mil shorter. So there we go, lesson learned. So I'm back at the workshop and I've got a cup of tea on the go and I've started making the parts for the drawers. I've already made one drawer to test the theory um, and that worked fine. So. I've painted that one and I've cut all these parts to make the others. These are all in order, so there's one drawers worth here, another here, and another here. Um, and these are all cut to size, and now I just need to route a slot uh, for the base to go in on all of these parts. Now I'm gonna leave the fronts for now um, because I won't know the exact orientation of these um, until the drawer body's like, in place. So I'm just going to route those and then sand them all and clean them up. A little longer than a few minutes later. So all the pieces for the drawers are cut now and it's time to assemble them. Uh, so I'm just going to start putting them together. I am going to glue and screw these. Um, the glue will be doing most of the work and the screws will just be to hold them together. And I have dry assembled these first so I know that there's no fit issues. I know they're going to go together okay. I'm back at the boat and 
the longer draw slides have arrived. So now the drawers are built, or mostly built, um, uh, it's time to fit them. So I'm gonna use this spacer, see it says runner spacer, uh, to space these up. And then I'm gonna fit them, oh, that is literally the perfect length. So then I'm gonna fit them on here and on the other side of the cupboard. Um, and then I'm just gonna screw these on um, and then I'll put the drawer in place uh, and then screw this part of the runner to the drawer. Oops. So to do this, I'm actually gonna remove these uh, like that so I can access the fixing holes. And yeah, these literally couldn't have been even one mil longer. I did measure this. Uh, I don't remember it being exactly 450 mil, but oh well, that's fine. So even though I'm using this spacer, if you don't center the screw in the fixing hole, the tapered head on the screw, go the right way, Ed, can actually pull the runner up or down or back or backwards or forwards if you don't get the screw bang in the middle of these fixing holes. Ah, uh, yeah, so the taper of the boat means that this has actually got about 10 mil gap at the back. Whereas the one closer to the front of the boat, closer to the front of the taper, in other words, has less room. So now I've got the two runners in, what I'm going to do is put these parts of the slides back in and put the drawer in place. There we go. And then I'm just going to pull them out to full extension and then get my drawer. It's probably over there. So there we go. And then I'm just going to pull these parts right up to the front of the drawer. So that is my drawer open. That's where my drawer is gonna be at full extension. And obviously there's gonna be a cupboard door here. Uh, I can use this to demonstrate. So if you imagine that's the cupboard door, then you, you can access that much of the drawer, which isn't obviously the full depth of it but it is the vast majority of it. If I'd used the 300 mil runners that I'd originally ordered, I would have 100 mil less space. So I would have only had like that much of the draw. Maybe that's generous, that much, but it's significantly lower percentage of the draw would be accessible when it was fully open anyway. That's the reason I've waited to, to get these longer runners. Bit of a pain, but worth it. So now I need to fix these on. Obviously at the moment, the drawer is sitting on the floor. So I'm just gonna use these little joiner plates as spacers and put these under this drawer while I screw the runners on, just so that this is spaced up a couple of mil from the floor. I've got plenty of headroom here. Uh, I've got like 15 or 20 mil, so. Although the front of the drawer is higher, so I need to be mindful of that so that it still fits under. But I, I've calculated that I've got, if I have this spaced up two mil off the floor, there's still space for the drawer to go back under here. So now with those runners fully screwed to the drawer, I can just slide these back in. What's going on, why is that stopped? Something's holding me up. Hmm. Okay, more work needed on this drawer. Ah, oh, that's so annoying. So I need to space it up a little bit more. And actually, 
if it goes up anymore, this is going to hit now, so I need to rework this. Oh, let's hope the other ones aren't this fiddly. So the drawers are in, they're fitted. Um, it took me quite a bit longer than I wanted it to. A lot of YouTube woodworkers make this look super easy, um, but my woodwork isn't as accurate as theirs, clearly, um, because I think the troubles I was having was because of alignment issues on the runners. Um, my cupboard bottoms aren't dead square, which, I mean, they're pretty good. They're within like one or two mil, um, but apparently that's too much for these runners to cope with. So, and so this drawer works really nicely. So it's pushed to open and it springs out and then you open it and then you, you close it and it's got a nice soft close. That's how they should work. This one, um, you push it to open and it just kind of gets stuck. Uh, and then when you pull it, it does actually open. So the mechanism has released. And then when you go to close it again, it does actually soft close, but it's just super, super slow. So, and I think that's down to the, uh, the alignment of the rails. I, they're the same height, that's not, getting them the same height isn't a problem. It's just, yeah, I think the gap's slightly too big. So I used some spacers, I used uh, one spacer at first and it kind of made it better because without any spacers it was really bad. Uh, so then I tried two and then it got really bad again this is kind of a happy medium. I think it needs somewhere between one and two spaces. So when I can be bothered, I'll mess around and I'll try again with that one. Um, and this one is kind of halfway between. Um, it doesn't release that well. But then once you've got it out, it does soft close nicely. Um, so yeah. And the reason I haven't got fronts on these drawers is because uh, I have made these slightly differently so um, when I made the original I just made the the bottom piece flush with the, the sides and then when I brought it here um, I offered up the front and then got it in place and then screwed it on the front. With these ones um, the bottom piece actually protrudes into the front piece a little bit because when you've got a load in then it can't bow the bottom so what I wanted to do was bring the fronts here and mark up where to machine the slot in the fronts um, because I wasn't quite sure how long these needed to be or where they needed to sit because I needed to make sure I had enough clearance in areas like this. So now I've marked these up, I'm going to take them back to the workshop, cut them down to length and then machine the slot in them. And then I can attach them and put a coat of paint on. Um, so the drawers are kind of mostly there and while I'm down here on the floor I've brought this trim piece up which is now finished and painted and I'm going to fix that in and put the final shelf on the bottom there. So that's done, um, yeah finished. Trim piece at the bottom and uh, bottom shelf in. I think that looks nice, I'm really happy with that actually. Um, just ignore the fact there's a gap at the back but yeah don't look at that. Now the job done. I'm just fixing these draw fronts on and I just thought I'd show you before I fix this last one on uh, what I meant when I was blabbering on earlier about slots in the front but not going all the way to the ends. So this is what I've done. I've machined a slot in the back of the draw front but it doesn't go all the way to the end and that's because I didn't want to be able to see the slot from the um, side of the draw. So when those slots are on, uh, when those fronts are on, I didn't want to just see the machine slot there from the side. And I know it's a tiny detail. And also when you look at the back and you're never going to be able to see the back. It is a tiny detail, but it was one that I wanted to, um, to do just for my own peace of mind, really. So that when they're open and you look at them, you don't see it. And I think an ugly slot there. Um, so yeah, before I fix this last one on, that's, I just thought I'd explain that. Um, and also, um, when I was bitching about my own shoddy craftsmanship earlier, um, it wasn't my tolerances. It turns out um, that there was a screw head um, sitting proud. One of these brackets, the screw was just up a little bit too high and it was catching. 
on the bottom here when I put the, uh, the drawer in. So now it works lovely. And the same when you open it, just springs out, you push it, springs out and then yeah, actually slides lovely. So wasn't my dodgy craftsmanship. <laughs> it was just a screw in the way. So the worktop has now got four coats of Danish oil on it and it's dry, so it's ready to fix it down. But before I do that, um, I needed to uh, sort the gas pipe out because it goes up and through into the bathroom for the water heater behind here. And if the worktop was fixed down, it would cover it and it'd be really hard to do. So I've done that off camera um, and I've also gone ahead and done all the, the rest of the gas pipe right up to the water heater. So that's in there. I might actually redo this last piece. I've done it in two sections, separated by that um, cut off valve there, uh, just so it's easier to fit the sections. Um, and yeah, the, the bend on this corner is mostly fine, but it's a little bit rippled. So I might do that again. Um, but anyway, now that's done, I can put this in place and fix it down. So now the worktop's fixed down, I can start on fun stuff like the hob. Obviously I've had the cutout cut for a while and that's because I've actually had the hob a while as well, just waiting, ready to be fitted. So let's do it. Nice. This is just fixed underneath with four little brackets that go in these holes. So this hob came with jets for natural gas, which is the gas that you have in your house, and LPG. So I've already converted this to the LPG jets before I fitted it. Um, so it's ready to run off the, the bottled gas that I get for the boat. Um, and it has a wok burner. You can probably see this massive burner on this bottom left-hand corner um, is a wok burner. And there's four jets just in this single burner. I'm hoping I have enough gas pressure to run that properly. Um, but I do a lot of Asian cooking um, so I wanted that massive burner so I can get a really hot pan. Um, that was something I really wanted to. And I also would have preferred to have had the wok burner here, but it, I couldn't find one anywhere that would fit the space that had a wok burner on this bottom right hand corner. Because obviously if with a, a big wok on the, the hob, I would, pr would have preferred it away from the wall but they just don't seem to exist. So you could get five burner ones with a wok one in the middle, but they wouldn't fit in the space I had here. Um, but this is fine. I think my wok will still fit there. So yeah, that's really exciting. So now I need to wire it in underneath and connect it to the gas supply. So I didn't record any of this because ridiculously my camera batteries are knackered. So I have to use my camera on mains and I had to turn the mains off to wire in the hob. Um, so I did all of this uh, off camera. So I've wired in a junction box um, because eventually I'm going to have my oven is going to need to be connected to the mains as well. Um, so I chopped the plug off the hob and I've hardwired it into the mains via this junction box. Um, I need to tidy up this cable, it's hanging around. And I can't remember in the boat regs if you're allowed electrical cable near the gas. You might have to have it in conduit, so I think I might have to put some conduit around this, which is fine, um, and tidy up this cable and pin it, pin it to the wall. Um, I've also connected the, 
hob to the gas supply. Um, again, I, I'm sure I remember reading on the regs that appliances need to be connected to the mains with, if they're flexible hoses, they need to be braided. Um, and I thought I was ordering a braided hose, but this weird yellow one has turned up. So I've connected it for now, but I might have to replace that. Um, but at least it will get me cooking. Uh, this little connector here, um, that T-piece is for the oven, um, but I'm awaiting a, an adapter 3 8 to 10 mil um, before I can put the other um, isolation valve on it because then I'll be able to actually turn the gas on and test all the uh, connections for leaks and then actually use the hot water heater and the hob. So the next thing, now that's all connected, is to fit the sink. Um, done. Uh, <laughs> so I guess the first thing is to fix this down, um, which is easy. And then the second step is to connect it up to the waste and the mains water. Connecting the mains water is actually easy because I've run the water hot and cold to here. So all I need to do is connect the pipes. The waste, to anyone who watched my plumbing video where I did all the plumbing inside the walls, the waste's a little bit more tricky and I've already had loads of shenanigans with that. Uh, so I, I've bought what I think are the right parts. I've been to Screwfix this afternoon and bought some bits that I think will work. We'll have to just see. So under here, the sink is held in with these brackets. So you just uh, pivot them like that and then do up this screw. And this one's missing, I don't know where that's gone. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go around and do that now. And that's the easy bit and then we'll do the plumbing. Okay, so the sink is fixed in. And now I've got to connect the water, uh, which is probably the easiest job, like I said. Um, this is the cold feed um, to the sink, and then this way goes to the rest of the boat. And this is the hot return, so this is the hot coming from the bathroom heater, or the water heater in the bathroom, sorry. Um, so that one's easy, that's just a push fit connector. This one's just a half inch BSP um, threaded connector and actually that's quite tight. Uh, I might have to get a longer one of these braided things but for now I'm just gonna thread that on which might be easier said than done. There we go, that's started. And this is sealed with a, uh, a rubber washer at the bottom of this, this thing. Is that the right one? No. I never know what size these plumbing fittings are going to be. They're all different and they're all crazy. Like old British standards. Does that one fit? No. Does that fit? Yes. The way I've done this means I can't, I can only turn like an eighth of a turn every time. That's probably enough, it's on a rubber washer. Right, and there is actually a stopcock on this, which I'm going to turn, because now we're connected to the taps. There we go, right, now that tap is turned on, I'm going to put that back up and clip it back. Where are the clips there? And where's the other one? Where's the other one? Oh, that's it. Right, so that's the cold connected and that's the hot connected. Oh, that was so easy. I am going to clip this one up eventually. Um, yeah, that's a bit tight. I might get a longer hose. Right, so that's the easy bit done. And now to do the waste. Now, the waste, which is a little bit more complicated, I think, but I think, I think I've got the bits I need to do it. So, I need to connect this outlet to that. Um, and this is exactly the same setup that was already on the boat. 
it's the same sink. The sink is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. So I've, I've refitted it. Um, so this was always here. And this is the same fitting on the outside of the boat. So that hasn't changed. Annoyingly, I can't find the old trap and pipe work. So I can't look at it and actually tell what it was. I have only been able to buy what I think is going to work with some strange adapters. Um, but we'll see. So this fitting on the outside of the boat uh, fits this which is a 32 mil solvent weld adapter. So that's gonna, that will screw on there and that, that fits. Um, so, and that, because that's 32 mil, I thought, okay, so I'll buy a bottle trap that's 32 mil, which I did. <laughs> and then the top of the bottle trap didn't screw onto this. It would accept a 32 mil pipe into this section, but this part was incorrect for the sink. Um, so now I've bought this bottle, bottle trap, which is a 40 mil bottle trap, which now fits onto the sink, but my 32 mil pipe doesn't fit into here because it's 40 mil. So what I have done is I've bought this adapter, which goes on the end of a piece of solvent weld pipe, 32 mil solvent weld pipe, and I think will fit into here as a compression fitting. So I'm gonna mock that up and we'll see. For the sake of argument, I'm just gonna push this adapter onto the end of the pipe and imagine that solvent welded on. And then that, is that gonna go in? I don't know. This is where not having any knowledge of this, all this stuff doesn't really help. Uh, so how does that work? Well, that collar is going to go over. And then does that go over that pipe? I don't know how plumbing compression works for this waste, waste compression, sorry. I've got my head around um, like 15 mil compression fittings on copper, but not this waste stuff. It all seems completely different. Does that go like that? Well, that fitting goes in there now. Does it pinch up? No, ah, no, but that, that's the solvent weld bit that's come apart. The adapter's actually in there. Okay, so I think that's going to work. So that goes in there, that goes on there, and then I've got some elbows here, which are 32 mil solvent weld, which will work with that. Perfect. Now I just need to figure out the routing and the length of the pipe. Right, I've just been doing a little bit of thinking, and I could if I wanted to make things easy for myself, do this way and have one 90 degree bend. So the pipe would exit here, come to about here, and then go straight into there. However, that would take up quite a bit of cupboard space, which I don't particularly want to do. That would eat into this sort of big area, nice storage area. And also my bin is going to go on the cupboard door here. So that might interfere. So what I think I'm actually going to do, because I'm an idiot and I like to make things hard for myself, is have the exit coming out the back and I'm going to have two bends that so will come to the back of the cupboard and then it will come here and then another bend right here and then go out. That will take up significantly less cupboard space, I think. I mean, it takes up the same amount of space, it's just in a different place and it's less intrusive on the cupboard space. So I think that's what I'm going to do, but because it's solvent weld and I've got a history with this, I need to definitely measure twice, cut once, and in the case of solvent weld, glue once. All right, so I've come up with an arrangement that seems to work. I've trimmed the pipes a little bit. I cut them to length and then kind of had to test fit them and then trim them a little bit. And this seems to fit together fairly nicely. Um, 
and I think there's a little bit of give if it's not quite the right size in terms of length this way and that way. Um, so yeah, now I suppose I should uh, weld them together. Uh, there is, it does kind of look like it's sloping down this way to me. Um, and I could, I'm hoping once it's welded together that it will sit a bit further up so it will actually drain out of here. Um, it looks almost flat or yeah, like slightly sloping down, but I could always mock up, put something so that actually sits a bit higher in the corner there. So yeah, I'll get this welded together now. So I've come out here because the fumes from this stuff are insane. Um, it says to use in a well ventilated area and they are not joking. Um, so based on my previous experience with Solvent Weld, I'm gonna do one joint at a time and I'm gonna hold it together until it's set. Um, because anyone that watched my plumbing video will know that I messed this up last time and my pipe ended up too long, I think, or too short, one of the two. And uh, I ended up having to buy a joiner and it, it looked horrible. I mean, it works, but it looked horrible. So I'm gonna do this one first. So that joins into there. So I'm gonna do that first. that goes in there and that one goes in there I'm just supposed to twist and then hold I'm gonna hold that so that it stays the the right length and I'm gonna hold it for way longer than I think is necessary this stuff is I mean I can smell it I mean it's quite close to my face obviously but Right, that is, I'm going to keep holding it because I'm scared. <laughs> okay, that's definitely joined. Stay. Next, I'm going to do this join, I think. That goes in there, that goes in there. I'm just going to knock some of this swarf off. I wish I had a pipe cutter that went this big actually, because uh, I've had to do this with a hacksaw and it's not the, the neatest job. But I mean, you can't see it once it's all glued together. Right, so these two go in here. I'm using quite a liberal amount. That's going there. There's a dairy farm just across the canal from where I am at the moment. And that one's going in there. Twist that and hold it. Again, for way longer than I think is necessary. Okay, I think that's done. So, the short piece has the adapter on it because that goes to the trap. So if I glue that one first, then I can't get that on the wrong end. Give that a twist. Hold that. This is actually the end where I have the most adjustability because I can just put this in further into the fitting. Although I can only go as far as I've got, as the lip is big on here. So actually, I think what I'm gonna do is now I have the two pieces, that bit and that bit. This is the bit I have to order online. Everything else I can get from local shops. I'm going to go and test fit this now, and if, it, if the fit is okay, then I'll glue this last joint. That's a, a great idea, even if I say so myself. Is that stuck? Yeah, right, that's good. Right, I'm going to go and test fit this before I do the critical joint. Okay, I am so glad I did that, because the orientation of this really matters. <laughs> and I think I would have just stuck it on any old way. So I've marked up this with a little line. So let's go for it. Oh, 
my marks are lined up. Now, just make sure it doesn't move the space, because that's, yeah, exactly. I don't think it's going to move now. Right, that's glued. This stuff terrifies me. Right, let's go fit it and see if it's watertight. All right, let's see if it still fits. Um, I'm not really sure which one to do first. Ah, uh, so. Bloody hell. Right. That goes on there. That goes on there. Oh, this stuff still stinks. I wonder if I need to wipe the residue off. Probably. That goes there. I'm going to leave that collar undone. I'll do that up last. That goes. I feel like I'm cross threading that. That goes like that. That's still in there. It didn't feel like it was pulling loads or anything. I could have done with being 10 mil longer, but I mean, that's still that's still fine the way it is. Okay, this is much more positive than the first time I used this stuff. There we go. I think, I'm guessing you have to only do this stuff hand tight because it's only got, it doesn't have things for tools. Right. Done. It fits. Well, that went significantly better than the last time. Oh, I'm learning. Right. Let's test it out. So I have a temporary tap on the shower and now this is connected, that means I have no more open pipes, which should mean I can leave the water on all the time now. I'm not going to, <laughs> but I could. Um, I've just turned the stopcock on. I need to put the fuse in the pump and then I'll turn the tap and see what happens. Water pump's priming. I'm gonna check for leaks, because I'm paranoid like that, because I did all this. It probably will take a while to prime. Didn't take that long, actually. I guess there's already water in there from when I tested the system before. Right, so I'm gonna open this tap and see what happens. Water comes out, great. I've got the plug in the sink. Someone kindly put a message or a, a comment on my plumbing video about how to bleed the air out of the system. So once I've got a bit more finish, I will do that. Good. I've got running water there. Why is it still priming? Why is the pump still running? Oh, because I've got a leak here. Where is that coming from? All oh, right, okay, that's just coming from that thing. That's not too bad. Well, I'm gonna turn the water off then. All right, so I don't know if you can see, uh, I have got a leak, um, but it, and it's coming from the adapter that goes from three quarter inch to half inch. Uh, it's the brass fitting you can see up there. So I need to tighten that up or put more PTFE on it or something. Um, but before I do that, I've turned the water off now. I'm gonna test this for leaks. So I'm just gonna pull the plug 
on the sink and see what happens. I can hear water going into the canal. I don't see any drips, do you? Wow, it actually works. First try. I'm pretty happy with that because that means I now have running water in the boat. Oh, what an, it feels like a massive achievement to me, but um, maybe not, but that's a big step forward, I think. I'm just gonna nip up that fitting under there um, and then I think I'll call it a day. So I had a look at that leak and it turns out it was the tap tail and not that brass adapter. So I put some PTFE tape on the threads and it sorted it out. So happy days. And with that, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I've almost got a functional kitchen. Can't quite make a cup of tea yet, but hopefully on the next video. Massive thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I've got more on my boat series up here and there's some more of my other videos up here. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, then please consider it. I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.